All right, so what we're starting off with here is the first video of the four, uh, five tips to stay alive. And I'm going to be going through this, correcting the video and adding any additional tips that uh, may help you guys out as well too. Keep in mind, I made this video almost two years ago. So there's definitely should be some alterations to it and some additional info that you guys may actually glean for this with the experience that I've gotten over the past couple of years. Let's get this thing cracking. Number one, upgrade old pipe to bone pipe on all heroes quickly to maximize the effectiveness of your healing. So real quick about the, the pipes that probably should have been added to, you mainly do want to make sure like whoever you're going to be using as party heal to at least have that person be the one who has their pipe upgraded um, quicker but you don't want to actually have too much of a variance between them. So like you never want to have one level of variance too much. So if you have, let's say your scholar is going to be the main uh, party healer. If he's at level one, the rest at zero or is kind of okay. But if he goes up to level two, you definitely want the other ones at level one as well too. It's good to have them all. You don't want to have them too much separation between those. Party heal is a powerful <clears throat> ability that cuts down on wasted hero turns while also allowing for your high damage heroes to focus on what they are good at, killing the enemy. If you combine party heal with upgrading to bone pipe, you can effectively get 135 healing HP out of one herb, which amounts to nine times more powerful than what you start with. So there's actually um, a little bit more of a correction on that one as well too. In Apprentice, there's actually a slight reduction when you actually use um, Party Heal. Uh, there's a 90% reduction to that. Um, so that comes down to actually is like 8.1. Um, in Journeyman and uh, Masters, it's actually 75%. It still means that Party Heal is still really effective. You get more out of it, but you don't get as much out of it as I had said in this video. There are a couple ways to obtain the ability Party Heal. For new players, there are a handful of weapons and armor that allows for your hero to party heal. If you are able to get your hands on a pipe diffuser, make sure to equip it in your trinket slot. It's much better than forcing yourself to hold on to a weapon or armor that becomes relatively weak over time. Okay, this is one of the biggest mistakes. There's actually two pretty big mistakes that I had in this video, and this is one of them. This gets into the confusion, especially as someone who's a newer player. This is on the basis of party healing within battle, which is actually doing it in battle is something you should do very rarely. So therefore, having a weapon, it's okay because when you're in a dungeon, you actually want to be primarily doing your healing in between your fights, not during your fights. So actually having a piece of equipment that gives you party heal is actually always good to keep for the duration of the game um, instead of having something that's always equipped. But there's a better solution. If you have played the game for a little while, you likely have enough lore to unlock the herbalist or monk class. <laughs> Each one of these classes comes with the ability to party heal. I highly recommend you start with the herbalist. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> And this officially gets to the whole joke that so many people on Discord give me crap about, um, especially Sheldon on this. <clears throat> okay, I overvalued Herbalist when I first started playing. I will say, though, the point of these videos was to help out beginning players. Herbalist is a very good hero for when you're first starting off, and the reasons for that are, one, you get party heal to stop, start, so you don't know even... You don't even know what party heal is. Once you figure out why party heal is so effective, and especially when you're doing it in between fights and not necessarily in battle because you actually want to be attacking, it's good to know what party heal does because party heal is the best ability in the game. By far. You use it for the entirety of the game and it's incredibly important. But Herbalist isn't the best hero in the game just want to make that massive clarification here and you don't have to have party heal always equipped because technically monk has party heal too and both monk and herbalist are not meta heroes that's the huge correction on this one um but 
I kind of don't want to make this correction because it's just, I always just love making it that people just think, I think Herbalist is the best hero of all time, which I'll still just always say that it is. <laughs> which herbs should you buy? There are three main herbs you should keep on you at all time. The first is God's Beard. God's Beard is the healing orb that was talked about in tips one and two. You should primarily buy as many God's Beards as you can while making sure your party healer has at least four of them. The next two herbs, each hero should have at least one. Panax. Panax removes poison, bleeding, and all other elemental effects. Your heroes getting poisoned is a common effect and you should remove the effect as soon as possible to avoid pointless loss of HP. The third is Hagsbane. When a hero gets cursed, they lose 25 points in the stat that is affected and will not go away until you cleanse the curse. You won't need Hagsbane often, but when you need it, you'll want to make sure that you have it. Tip number Okay, so those three, um, it, those are generally pretty good tips, but there's it goes even deeper once you get better at the game. Um, first off, you want to collect as many God's Beards as humanly possible. And when you say have at least one panics per, true, I generally like to have three panics as per. I, I'm a little bit different than some other people. Some people like that just absolutely stockpile panics. I don't quite understand why. Um, I think three on each hero is more than enough, is my own opinion. Hagsbane is kind of a little bit more of a luxury. I do always want to have at least one in each hero. Um, if you sp per if you specifically play um, Scholar, you typically don't need it later on in the game because he's got certain equipment that allows for you to not get cursed. It just sucks when you do get cursed at the most inopportune time. The one that is not added in here, and this actually has to do a lot with experience and the reason why it didn't make it into this particular video is golden roots golden roots you i would actually put as the number two important herb um because you stockpile as many golden roots as you do as god's beards the issue is is when you're first starting off you don't understand how to use focus well and on top of it to the strength of the abilities that you have and therefore you kind of waste using golden roots so for beginning players i actually wouldn't waste the money on golden roots because i just don't think you utilize focus properly once you are trying to go to the next level though i would say that you you want to stock up on golden roots because it is it, it i almost find golden roots maybe even more important than god's beers um because it that actually ends up saving you more health and life if you use it appropriately than the god's beards themselves do Okay, so those last couple tips, I mean, we're, we're totally fine, but there's there's something big that I did not utilize at the very um, beginning of when I was playing FTK is, so this is the sixth tip to stay alive, is the utilizations of the towns themselves for inning. Um, that's where you mainly want to heal yourself. You actually want to use your herbs as a last resort. You don't necessarily want to be using them that's why like you try and stockpile them as much as humanly possible um so using the towns for your healing like after you get out of dungeons or after you get out of fights do not use your herbs stockpile them as much as possible and if you do all of those things um while also the other tips that i just talked about um that's actually going to help you stay alive quite a bit um and then kind of like a, another bonus one, which we've talked about at nauseum with the other videos, is upgrading all your weaponry. Your weaponry is actually going to help you in battle and therefore be a much um, stronger part in terms of actually keeping you alive than, um, than uh, making sure that you have like a ton of herbs and all that kind of stuff.